Hello all, welcome back to the channel. So today we are diving deep into a technology uh, that is transformed the way we transfer uh, money to others, right? That is called a UPI or Unified Payment Interface. So if you ever uh, used apps like Google Pay, Phone Pay or Paytm uh, to send money, uh, you have interacted with the UPI. But have you ever wondered how this technology works? Well, today we are going to explore uh, the fascinating tech, the entire architecture and the 12-step process that powers the UPI, right? and how it enables seamless real-time uh, payments across banks. So let's start by understanding what UPI is. So UPI is a real-time payment system developed by NPCI. NPCI is a uh, you know government corporation and the full form is National Payment Corporation of India. It allows you to link multiple bank accounts to a single uh, mobile application, uh, creating an ecosystem where you can transfer money, pay bills or do recharge, right? A lot of things you can do or even or even shop online instantly using just a mobile number or a virtual payment address also known as VPA. So uh, before we dive into the actual uh, process, let's look at the main players or entities that are involved in a single UPA transaction. Okay, so the first entity involved in a uh, UPA transaction is the payer. So payer, that's you, the person making the payment. Let's say your uh, VPA or the virtual payment address is uh, Pritam Enter at YB, YBL. The next entity in the entire UPI architecture is the payer PSP. Okay, PSP is also known as the payment service provider. So let's say your UPI app like Google Pay, Phone Pay, or Paytm, etc. They partner with sponsor banks like Yes Bank, ICICI Bank, etc. And use them as its PSP or the payment service provider. Okay, for example, uh, Phone Pay has partnered with Yes Bank, ICICI Bank, etc. Okay, so this Yes Bank is a PSP of Phone Pay. Okay. Similarly, Google Pay is partnered with Texas Bank, HDFC Bank and, and it uses them as, as its PSP. So PSP for your virtual payment address or VPA, Pritam Adderit, YBL is the Yes Bank Limited. Okay. So uh, what does a PSP do actually? So the PSP bank acts as a gateway between the UPI app and the user's bank. Okay. So it is multiple functionalities such as it authorizes and routes the UPI transaction request creates and manages your VP or UPI address, right? Uh, your virtual payment address. Uh, facilitates the process of linking user's bank account into the UPI app, right? You link multiple bank accounts in your UPI app, right? So that's uh, that's one of the job of the uh, PSP. So the third entity in the architecture is the Pay PSP. That is the payment service provider used by the Pay's v VPA. Let's say Pritam address YBL is paying to the UPI address Kesari address OK HDFC Bank this UPI address. So here HDFC bank is the PSP for the pay Kesari. All right. So the next entity in the uh, architecture is the remitter bank. So remitter bank is the bank where the payer's account is held. Okay. Uh, this is the bank which you have linked in your UPI app. Let's say you have linked your ICICI bank account in your UPI app phone pay. The fifth entity is the beneficiary bank, which is nothing but the pay's bank account where money is being credited. Okay, let's say the beneficiary has linked his SBI account with his UPI app. So that is the beneficiary bank. And lastly, the core of the entire architecture is the NPCI uh, network. So the National Payments Corporation of India, it handles the entire switching and routing of the transactions. So this was about the entities involved in a um, single UPI transaction. So all these play together and make a uh, transaction uh, execute successfully. right? Now let's, uh, now let's break down the 12-step process involved in a typical UPI transaction and how the magic happens behind the scenes. Okay. Now the step one is the payment creation step. Imagine you are paying a shopkeeper or merchant uh, a rupees of rupees 500 using phone pay. So here payer is you and pay is the shop, shopkeeper or the merchant. All right. Now what do you do? You open the app, right? enter the amount, either select their UPI ID or scan the QR code. Correct. And at this point, UPI app that you are using transfers the payment request to its PSP. Okay, so in this step, in, in this step number one, the payment request is transferred to the PSP. For, for example, as we discussed earlier, PhonePay is partnered with Yes Bank, ICIC Bank, Axis Bank as its PSP, right? Now, PhonePay takes your payment request and initiates the transaction on your behalf. This step involves creating the transaction request, which includes the transaction amount, pay details uh, like pays, VPA. For example, in our case, let's say the VP of the pay is Kesari Direct OK HDFC Bank, right? And other related information are in, uh, included in the payment request. It then routes the request to its PSP based on the payer's VPA. 
For example, here the payer is Pritham and Dad YPL. Uh, hence, it routes the request to S Bank Limited PSP because as discussed, phone pay is not linked to only one PSP. It is partnered with multiple banks. So based on the UPI address or VPA of the uh, payer, for example, here it is at YBL, which stands for S Bank. Hence, it routes the request to S Bank PSP. So this is how the step one works. Uh, and, and the payment request is uh, routed to the desired PSP or pay payment service provider. Okay. Uh, now the next step is authentication step. Now in this step, our PSP sends an authentication request back to us asking you to approve the transaction. So this is where we enter our UPI pin in our UPI app to authorize the transaction. So this is about the step two. Now the third step is the payment request step. Now once we have authenticated with our UPI pin, the PSP sends a payment request to the remitter bank where we have our account and it routes the request via NPCI. Okay. Note that the request is sent through the NPCI network which manages the entire UPI ecosystem. Okay. Now in the fourth step, uh, the NPCI network then contacts the pay PSP, okay, that is the merchant's PSP, to ask for the merchant's merchant's account detail based on the VPA of the pay. Now in the fifth step, the pay PSP responds back to the NPCI request with the merchant's account details like their bank account number, merchant ID, etc. And this is done to confirm that your payment will be credited to the correct recipient. Okay. Now in the next step, that is the sixth step, uh, NPCI sends a debit request to our bank. Then your bank checks your account balance to make sure there are enough funds and starts the process of deducting the amount. Uh, now comes the seventh step. In the seventh step, after deducting the uh, required amount, our bank sends a debit response back to the NPCA, confirming that the money has been uh, successfully debited from our account. Now, in the eighth step, uh, after successfully debiting our account, NPCA sends a credit request to the beneficiary bank or the merchant's bank. Okay. Now this request is an instruction to credit the same amount into the merchant's account. So basically NPCI is sending a message to the beneficiary bank that hey bank just credit this, uh, this amount in the merchant's account. So that's the step number eight. In step number nine, the merchant's bank receives the request, credits the amount to the merchant's account. Okay. And it sends a credit response back to the NPCI to confirm that the credit has, uh, has been done successfully and it sends an acknowledgement. So in the step number nine, beneficiary bank sends a confirmation message to the NPCA. Now in step number 10, which I, which I marked in a uh, dotted line. So in this step, what happens is uh, once um, all the steps are uh, executed, right? In the next step, the pay PSP regularly checks with NPCA for the payment status to confirm whether the credit to the merchant has been completed or not and the entire transaction has been successfully completed or not. So it, uh, the pay PSP regularly uh, pings the NPCA uh, network and it checks about the payment status. So in the next step, once the payment is completed and uh, all both the debit and credit has been successfully done, in the step 11, NPCA responds with the current transaction status confirming whether the payment was successful or not. It uh, sends a response back to the pay PSP. Okay. So now in the final step, that is the step number 12. The Pays PSP sends a confirmation message to our UPI app letting you know that the payment has been successfully done or whether it was successful or unsuccessful. The final response is sent to, the, to our app and after that we get a notification from our UPI app also confirming that the payment has been made successfully or it was unsuccessful. Whatever it is, you will get the final message in your UPI app. So this is how the entire uh, UPI payment works. Okay. Now you might wonder how do banks settle those payments behind the scenes. So UPI leverages the IMPS infrastructure allowing for real time interbank settlements. Okay. Even outside uh, traditional banking hours and NPCA plays a key role in that entire process. It plays a key role in clearing and settlement between the banks. So after the transaction is processed, the remitter bank and the beneficiary bank settle the funds to the NPCA's uh, infrastructure. Okay. Now, one main uh, question that should come to our mind is how security is ensured in the entire uh, UPI payment process. So security is a huge concern in any system that you build, right, or any financial system that you build. So UPI uses multiple layers of security, including two-factor authentication. So when you are making a payment, your mobile device is the first layer of uh, authentication. Um, then your UPI pin serves as the second. So this is how 
entire UPI system ensures security in its entire process. Okay. You see how smoothly the flow works, right? The customer initiates the payment, their bank debits the amount, and your bank credits it. So NPCI acts as the central system to make sure the transaction flows securely and seamlessly between all parties. Okay. So NPCI is the core or heart of the entire UPI architecture. So and that's how UPI works. So it's a revolutionary system uh, that has made digital payment simple, fast, and accessible and safer for everyone. Whether you are paying for groceries or sending money to friends or families or shopping online, UPI has made it all seamless, right? So if you found this breakdown uh, helpful, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and give a thumbs up. So we are targeting to reach 300 subscribers by the end of this month. So keep supporting. So if you got any questions about the entire discussion that we just made, put them in the comment section and I will be sure to answer. And thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.